Femme Osage, Missouri is a tiny, unincorporated community in St. Charles County's wine country. More accurately, perhaps, Daniel Boone country, because it's been around that long. And this church picnic, 190 years in the making. The picturesque Femme Osage Church was marking that anniversary on a hot summer Sunday afternoon in August. It's an exciting, it's an exciting event happening, 190th anniversary. That's a lot of years. I mean, we know St. Louis has a long history, but 190 years for a church, especially on this side of the river, right? <laughs> On this side, on this side of the river, we our moniker is we're the oldest German evangelical church west of the Mississippi. Our property was the hunting ground of Daniel Boone. The first pastor was an educated immigrant by the name of Hermann Garlix. He wasn't ordained; that would come later. But he was a good preacher, and several other churches that are still in this area also point to him as their first pastor. The history is all around. The one-room schoolhouse, it was built from stones from the old church building after this one opened in 1888. This started out as a pretty simple story about a church picnic, a church celebrating its history. Well, it is that. Turns out, though, it's a lot more than that. This church's story is part of a complicated story of immigrants from the kingdoms and principalities and grand duchies of what is today's Germany coming to the American frontier with different ideas about religion, Catholicism, and competing versions of Protestantism. So I figured a trip to Eden Seminary in Webster Groves was a good place to start. The United Church of Christ Seminary traces its own roots to Missouri's early German churches. St. Louis was a gateway for a lot of German immigrants of every religious or non-religious stripe. We sat down with Eden librarian and archivist Scott Hall. What happened here in the United States with all these different immigrant groups is that all of the religious situation that was going on in Germany with it, all of its conflicts was just brought over. The real battle for the folks in Femme Osage was with those Germans who called themselves rationalists. You know, they just thought much of religion was superstition. And so, you know, you know, knowledge comes from the intellect, from human ability and intellect, not from some kind of, you know, divine God that reveals himself in the Bible. Hull says the trouble started when a group of German rationalists settled in Marthasville. And this would not be a story of peaceful coexistence. The Famo Sage group, I'm sure, was just happy to just go to church, have their church business, be left alone in peace. But this group, these rationalists, they saw, again, that the church people were leading people astray. They were feeding them superstition. And they wanted to drive us out of this valley. Uh, they did three things to do that. They first tried to publicly humiliate Pastor Garlic. Then they tried to subvert his work. And then Pastor Bodhi had two assassination attempts done on him. The church survived, it joined with other evangelical churches, and opened the first Eden Seminary in Marthasville in 1850. In the 20th century, there were mergers with the German Reformed churches and then with congregational churches to form the United Church of Christ. Today, the UCC is considered one of the most liberal denominations in the country. You may have seen UCC pastors marching in local protests. But the Reverend Dr. Willie is wary of such political activism. He prefers a greater emphasis on scripture. And on this Sunday, he preached Hermann Garlick's original sermon and then one of his own. So the second sermon was about as we deal with those in our denomination that differ from us, that may hold to political activism, our response should be one of humility, graciousness, kindness, compassion, love, but we don't have to agree. Church histories are filled with divisions and mergers, agreements and disagreements about the right way to worship and apply biblical teachings to everyday life. That's as true today as it was 190 years ago. But at this gathering, marking the Femme Osage Church's long history, it seemed just about everyone was in agreement, at least when it came to singing the praises of the fried chicken. For Living St. Louis, I'm Jim Kircher.